Well, welcome back, everybody, to Be The Trader. Today, I have a very special guest. A lot of you guys were hoping I'd get him on the show, and he agreed to come on today, so I really appreciate Stephen Ducks joining me today. If you don't know who Stephen Ducks is, then maybe you just entered the trading world, or maybe you've been living on a rock. So make sure you go Google or YouTube Stephen Ducks, and I'm telling you, you're going to learn all about his background. I do want Stephen to kind of give a, a little brief overview for those who want to go look later, but again... Stephen Ducks, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So if, if you can maybe start off just giving a quick, like, you know, what got you into trading and then we'll go from there. Okay. So uh, that started back when I was in college. Uh, I was doing an engineering major and uh, I don't really remember what happened that time. I went through a breakup and my parents are really against me for doing trading. So uh, I kind of want to prove something that, you know, kind of want to prove they're wrong. So that's, that's one of the motivations that helped me start it. Awesome. Um, ever since after that, I turned, uh, um, like part of it coming from my college tuitions because I don't have to pay until end of the year. So that's really, that's where my or original phone came from and uh, turned 27000 into $5 million so far. So. That's awesome, man. And you know, one thing that you mentioned, and you mentioned before in the past, you know, you went, you, you went to school, you're going for engineering, and you've also learned multiple languages, right? Like, you know, multiple languages. I haven't practiced for a while since so I've been sitting home all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I was just wondering because it seems like, you know, one thing that I've noticed from watching for some time is you, you, you're very, you, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, be, feel free to let me know. But I've noticed you're very analytical and you like to really look at spreadsheets and really figure out what is your plus, you know, A plus plus yeah. setup, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what got, are you've always been that way? Because, you know, going to engineering, it seems like that's kind of the route you would need. That's to the route you're supposed to approach. Yeah. And, and so did you kind of learn from engineering to do this with trading or it was a, is it completely different in terms of how you track or? The methods are pretty much the same. Engineering are more complicated. Uh, in oh. terms of understanding the concept, but trading is pretty much dealing with numbers and figure out the supply and demand. That's it. So, and so, what what have you found just for yourself today? What, have you found have you found yourself doing anything different than what you used to do when you first started? Uh, right now, definitely yes. Uh, since we're in the coronavirus pandemic, then we're getting a lot more volume than usual. Everything's trading hundreds of millions of shares. So that means you can definitely size in bigger. I, my size has been pretty big since uh, this uh, since 2020. But, um, other than that, uh, there's a few more patterns that came out and uh, it, I have to adjust it some, some of the pattern, which is that I, Pretty come up, I come up with in 2018, 2019. Uh, volume estimate is still there. Uh, maximum dollar block has to be changed a little bit since there's much more people trading. Uh, other than that, uh, just small tune back and forth, but nothing major that is changing. So, so when you when you say that you're making like some fine tune, or, or are you eliminating some of your patterns? Or are you are you just eliminating some factors have you found that certain things don't really matter anymore or things do matter more than you thought uh yes definitely like there i have to come up with like so many factors together to really track the statistics and to filter it out which one is, doesn't really matter in certain situations uh let me give you an example so let's say we have a multi-day runner that i ran 10 that uh, ran uh 10 days and um while the stock is spiking, all of the sudden, stock dealer offering. And it really depends on uh, how much the stock drops. Now, these type of offerings will destroy the momentum, but they don't really destroy it. So when the buyers are, when they announce the entry offering, they don't really expect the entry offering comes in. So as soon as the offering comes in, the first instinct they will have is, okay, well, I'm down 50%, I'm just gonna hold it forever and wait it to, to, come, uh, to come back. So when you get into that type of situations that there's a lot more stacked buyers that, that are holding. So when an offering comes in, it will trigger SSR the next day and 
if you know one of the bigger market makers go into the market, they see, okay, there's a bunch of stock buyers and the stock is on SSR. So super easy for me to manipulate, have a decent base of buyers and also uh, have SSR. So I can squeeze the short sellers and make it to you know break the high. So these type of situations, you have to wait for the stock to naturally break its own momentum. You cannot be forced by either offering some type of files. So naturally, natural decline momentum is much better than shorting to uh, offering momentum. So, ah, it's a good point. Because that's, that's, that's happened before quite a yeah. bit lately where you'll yeah. have things midday offering and then they'll crack, but then they'll just come right back. So I, I definitely I definitely know what you're saying there. And you know, I'm very curious. So how have you gotten to a point where too much is too much? Like too many factors that you're looking at, too many different indications like, oh, the flow, the cap the you know the uh how how many days it's up if there's this if there's that like how did you get to a point where you're like okay this is too much now i'm getting too much analysis and this is just enough does that make sense Uh, yeah i only use up about five to six factors at the same time while i'm trading uh if any if if all the factors lend to one directions then i would definitely short into it uh but some of the factors plays the majority of you know the percentage, uh, like the resistance, the support, how heavy the resistance is, what's the dollar block in that resistance. Um, and those are pretty, like those factors playing the majority of the factors. Gotcha. And after that, it depends on the price range and the flow of the market cap, then yeah, it goes up to that. So, so they're weighted factors. Yeah, they're weighted factors, yes. Gotcha, that makes sense. And and so really, you know, you, you might have, you said you have five factors and maybe three out of the five are heavier weighted. Those will trump the other two factors in some yes. cases, or at least it'll dictate how big you go in, if you will. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you someone who trades every day ducks or is it, can you give me an idea of, are you trading every day or, or is it more so I know the market's a little bit more active right now. It's pretty much every day. We have hundred percent up gap up yeah. everything. So in a normal, I don't want to say normal, but right now, answer that question like are you trading every day and then you know prior to coronavirus how was the trading like then right now i'm pretty much trading every day um before the coronavirus happened i only trade about maybe two or three days a week uh if there's no you know setups i just skip the day nothing to really think about uh right now i feel a little bit burned out since there's a lot of you know things going on and uh, I had to take multiple positions at the same time, which I, which I don't used to do uh, two years ago. So right now uh, you do make much more profit, but you do feel like burning out really fast, um, especially this month. Yeah. Yeah. This month's been very active. And, and what's crazy is you mentioned that before this, it was like maybe two, three times a week. And then, and then after this is kind of like every day, it just shows a lot of people the market can drastically change and it's it's drastically changing for sure now yeah. but a lot of people i interviewed they're you know there's consistently profitable traders from millionaires to small you know maybe 100k 200k i say small it's all relative but mm-hmm. at the end of the day most traders they say stick to one or two setups most traders who've made it who've, who've quote unquote made it they, they say you know find what you're good at and only trade that but then when I ask them on the show, how often do you trade? They say, you know, every day. Or, and it's always been like that or multiple times throughout the day. And so uh, I, really, I really respect that you I, – I, I thought you, you were going to answer that the way I thought you were. When you said you only trade maybe two, three times a week whenever before coronavirus, and now it's every day. But I, I'm very curious on – even though it's every day – give me a perspective. Is it every day multiple tickers usually, or is it every day usually one or two, one maybe, and just focus? Yeah, one, one or two tickers. Yeah, maximum three. I don't really trade like seven tickers at once. I cannot do that. So, Because typically my positions are anywhere between, and that really depends, but for now, like around 200, 300K. So if you have three positions, that's already a million dollars. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd yeah. be crazy. So that makes sense. And now because you're trading bigger positions, it's, it's make, you have to trade differently. Like you can't have all that money spread out. I mean, you can, but, but how you like to trade, you like to focus on the best when you first started out. Right. And you're focusing on the best where you, where you, you know how 
it can be difficult. Uh, well, how much did you start out with, by the way? 27,000. Okay. So when you started out 27,000, I'm sure there was a part where when you got to over PDT, where that little stress of like, man, I just got over PDT or that's over PDT, 25K. So when you're yeah. over PDT, are, were you ever trading? Were you trading like you had 27,000 or were you trading like you were just over PDT? Does that make sense? Like 20. Yeah, I, I do see a lot of people like as soon as they started an account with like a little bit over PDT. And one of the, I would say the mark in their head is I cannot get it down under 25,000 or I'm going to be in trouble. So that type of fear makes them like not be able to recognize the right setups. Uh, for me, uh, I know I'm going to be emotional and I know that mark is there. So to be able to counter that, I say, okay, well, this is the highest winning percentage pattern that I have. Uh, and even though I have better, uh, not better, but like multiple patterns that have decent, month, decent winning percentage, I'm going to stick to that one until I hit 50K. Then I will split my count into 27, 27. So if I screw up once, I will have another chance. And uh, that's where I start uh, profiting without any type of like, worry in my head. Because that type of thing can really screw up. I see a lot of traders making the same mistakes. Yeah, yeah. so, so at that time, is that pretty much what you did? You, you focus on the best of the best at that, when you were a little bit smaller of an account so you can get further away from BDT and then that yeah. way you can start to branch out to setups that were still profitable, but weren't, let's say one was like, I know this is all made up. This is all made up everyone, but like if one is like 90% pro success rate and the other one is 60, they're both profitable, they're both high, high odds, but you would only focus on the 90% one on the nine, until you yeah. moved further enough away to get that psychology clear, cleaned up, right? Yeah, yes. That, I like that you said that because a lot of us face that. I mean, a lot of us will, will try to work through PDT and then, and then we're there, but then we feel like we're at zero. <laughs> you know, like because you're because worried about 25,000 as being zero, so it's just yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, that type of, I would say, I would suggest that they, a trade zero account probably because they don't have the restrictions they're international so but for us people uh it's kind of it's kind of kind of tough it is and, and so i that gets me back to how and this is a hard question to answer maybe maybe it's not but how is it that for you because people are probably asking like man how does he just trade once in a while like once a week two times a week and some people could say, well, if you're trading that big as ducks, you know, it's easy to trade once a week because you're going to make all your money in one trade, you know, where when you have a small account, you you're thinking, well, it's only a hundred bucks, you know, but I know you came from a small account too. So you also know what it's like. So how were you able to do it? How were you able to get your mindset where you're just, you know what, one trade this week, I'm done because that's the only time it showed up. And then how were you able to move forward? after that one trade for that week and not have that fear of, Oh, even though it's that one high odd setup, you still could lose. You know what I'm saying? So how yeah, did you yeah. deal with that? So the first thing that I did is I had the same problem that everybody had is um, they are so fear of missing opportunities. And that's something that every, I would say everyone has it. And uh, this is pretty much the same mindset that going to a casino that I don't really know what's going to happen for the next month or two, you gotta keep going there. So one of the, I would say, probably the one of the best methods I came up with, I'm very proud of that method, uh, is I will track, I will pull, so as soon as I get into the market, I'm not rushed, I'm gonna take my time, about three or four months, I'm going to f ask other traders, maybe get some type of statistics, and try to get statistics by myself, uh, I will track this specific pattern, not the risk reward. I will track the frequency per year. So once you know how many times it happens per year and what's the reward you can get per year and what's the percentage of you losing per year, you can pretty much simulate the entire year again without any type of I'll say, problems uh, and just use certain equities per time to grow it. Now, I didn't really use the snowball method because each time your account grows, then you can use higher higher percentage of your account. Mm -hmm. So I just used that one equity. Um, then I simulated, okay, well, I can make about 400K in a year without doing anything. I, oh, I put the losses in, I put the 
you know, again, I didn't really calculate a slow boil effect. So I, I'm going to make much more compared to this, this amount. Mm. Now, once I have that simulated gain in my head, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of missing opportunity because I know it's going to happen to me by the end of the year. And I've, I've actually done that two or three times. So I'm very confident. Uh, I'm not mm. afraid to lose a trade. Not or to so missing a trade. Yeah. So basically, you essentially drew out your goal, your your vision, and yeah. you put down your vision on paper and saw that over time, this is what's going to happen. And so therefore, you knew that it's okay to wait for that setup, because over time, you're going to get it in the long run, you'll have multiple shots at it, and you'll be able to get to your success or that some close to that number. Correct. Yeah. Awesome, man. And then, you know, I, I, I'm very curious on today. You mentioned earlier, and and this may be the challenge, but what has been something you really been working on personally to make yourself better as a trader? Um, So right now I'm trying to test my maximum positions because this is a brand new market. So usually what I tested uh, for a regular market back in two years ago, a maximum position in one ticker around 20 to 30 million volume on the day, is around 300K maximum. If you're sizing more than that, uh, you will do something weird. You always do something weird. So uh, now I have sized in close to 400 to 500 uh, into like a uh, huge, I would say it has sufficient enough volume, enough liquidity for me to size into, into that type of trades. But right now, uh, still in process of figuring out what's the maximum so I can max my profit. How, how are you, it seems, have you been able to fluidly just, as you've been growing, ha, have you not hit a, like an area where it was just like your psychology got kind of tested? Yeah, everybody has it. Um, it just depends on how you really deal with it. And personally, uh, I don't know. I just do something else. And when I hit like a big bump, let's say when I'm testing positions and everything amplifies the um, again got got amplified and losses gets amplified um i had i think this i don't know this month i already made close to a million i don't know if you're close to a million or not but somewhere around there and i think i took a hundred i don't know close to like between three trades like 150k losses now typically i don't take that type of losses uh, maximum losses I took on um, 2018, 2017 is around maybe between all the trades in one day, uh, not in one trade, but between all the trades gotcha. around like 110, 120. Now 150, that's like exceeding. I have to really look at my rules. Did I do something wrong? So that's like a big setup setback for me. But um, now the profit is definitely overwhelming. Up. I never think about profits, so that's why there is a little bit of setback, but. Once you do that, uh, I would say you have to take a break. You, I know everybody don't want to take a break. Once you take a huge loss, you want to make that thing back. <laughs> uh, you will have to. Like you have to do anything that is necessary for you to make to make you stop. Either you go into the weekend or you cut your mouse, you cut your keyboard. You do, you do that. You have to do that. Um, it's a uh, and. And there's one suggestion for every trader is uh, the longer you survive, the better you will be. Like there's nothing more true than that. So it, it, it's not worth it to fight on that one specific day or one specific ticker. So what have you found? First off, what you just said is, is, is gold. You know, the longer you survive, the better you're going to get. And yeah the better you're going to be. I mean, it's just a lot of people lose focus on, oh, I'm going to miss out or I'm going to lose here. I'm going to hold. And then they don't realize that if you can survive this game long enough, you'll get it. And then you'll the get longer it, yeah. You sur- yeah. The longer you survive it, then you'll start to get better. So yeah. I love that you said that. I think that's huge. And hopefully people understand what you said by that, because I really think that was just a great quote. So one thing I want to ask you though, is you, is you mentioned that, oh no, no, no whenever you started teaching, right, you, you started teaching, that's a new journey for you as well. Like at first you buy yourself, then you start teaching. What have you found from teaching perspective that is like um, some of the biggest roadblocks for people? Uh, I don't really find like 
roadblocks for people. I just, I just can see myself. Like I could just can see there being myself being me two years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, and so, uh, the biggest block is typically when I trade, I keep a really tight risk, and I you know. Uh, have a decent reward. Winning percentage is pretty good, uh, and I do see a lot of student that okay. Well, he had uh, ten trades in a row; they're all win. So next time, I'm gonna go all of my count in right there. Uh, and I've done that before. I personally done that before because once I figure out a pattern, and I won about there is I would say back in 2016, 2018, I think during the summer uh, cross in three months, I made 56 trade. I won 54 or 53. So I was so confident. I think market is really easy. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're going there and pick up some money. But yeah. uh, there's one trade really got me. I forgot what ticker, but I lost like close to 70K in that ticker. So he wiped out uh, about like 20 trades or 25 trades. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> Biggest roadblock is to fight through their emotions. Like it's not about your trading skills. Like the thing that I teach is numbers. They're fixed. They cannot be changed, but your emotions can be changed. So it really depends on your mindset. If you don't really have a good mindset, then you will, you will be afraid of pretty much everything. Like a little perk, if you are shorting or you know, if you're buying a little panic, stuff like that. That I just will you know, take away all your profits. Yeah, no, no. Is there anything that you mentioned earlier when you took your lot, like every once in a while something will happen and maybe you get uncomfortable and, and you run into that, that day where you lose a little bit more than you want. Yeah. What do you personally do? Cause you know, you say you got to take a break. What do you do? Like, do you just, do you just do something else? Like, do you leave? Do you, I play a lot of games, uh, video games. I play, uh, a lot of StarCraft with Tim. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. I play Valorant. I'm trying to get you and Tim to play Valorant. First person shooters, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I saw that game. Yeah. I used to play CSGO, but that type of game gets me triggered really quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It can. Yeah. Can. So, so like that type of team game, like when I play with my team and all of a sudden you do something stupid or your teammate did something stupid, you have to, you have something to blame. You always have something to blame. So you hate the game instead of you're trying to fix your mistake by yourself. Now, StarCraft, it's a single player. So if you made a mistake, it's all on you. It's pretty much the same as trading. <laughs> True. So, True. So you can improve from that. Speaking of that, when it comes to trading and it's all on you, do you feel like a lot of people don't take responsibility? By taking a loss or? or when it comes to the trading, like, like, um, yeah, when taking losses, I guess I would, yes. Uh, yeah, some people do. Uh, I used to have the same problem. When I take a loss, I'm afraid to look at my account statement. Like, I'm afraid to face that mistake. Everybody does that. And uh, I know people don't talk about it, but people do it. I do it. <laughs> so once you get used to it for a while and you think irrationally, you have to like you have to go into that trade, find out where you did wrong. If you find it out, you can avoid it next time. But if you tend to avoid it, you're going to make it again. Hmm. Um, yeah. Do you do you are you two things? You you mentioned you don't really pay attention or you don't want to look at your or you don't focus on profit law, like your profits really too much. Do you yeah. mean like you're not like constantly every day looking at what you made or are you kind of like, I don't want to look at it until X amount of days? Like what's, what's your kind of stance on that? Okay, so I do have a number in my head, but I don't want to specifically count. Now, typically when I trade, I hide everything. I, don't, I even hide realized, unrealized. Uh, so I just have a count number and then and a type, which is margin. And I don't really look at my account equities. Uh, but whenever I know I made a huge rain, I will take about 80% uh, of the gain, about 60 to 80%. And I will think that 60 to 80% is a loss. So it sets me back mentally. Uh, do you know, like you have to treat it, it, yeah. it, 
Yeah, you have to treat it a little bit different. You have to treat it mentally that you, when you make money, you have to think of that fact that you lost that 60 to 80% of that profit. So when you get a huge step back in your mental, you will make much better clear, clear decisions the next day uh, after a huge win. So, so do you uh, mean like if you're, let's, let's just make it real easy. If let's say you had a profit of a thousand dollars, and that's big at that time for your size. And you're like, are you thinking I only had a profit, you know, let's say six, 70% of that is a loss. So I only had $300 profit that day. Is yeah. You're thinking. Yeah. And you do that because why? Uh, I do that. Be- no, I will think as a loss. I won't think as only profit. Let's say I made a thousand dollars. I took 70% now. I will think, okay, well, I, made, I just made a thousand. I will uh, the next of oh, next thing happened is I took a 70, uh, oh. 70% loss of that profit. Now, once you, uh, typically when you take a loss, your mental changes, changes instant, be like super careful, being like well in spotting different criteria. When you're winning, you're off your head and start making mistakes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have That's to a force good point. me to do that. Yeah. But so do you just take a breather and just think about it and just focus on like, I just took a 70% loss on that, on that game? Uh, it's more... Uh, like I have to keep repeating myself in my head. I like, took a 70% loss. You took a 70% repeat a hundred times. That will actually become a fact. <laughs> it actually works. So. <laughs> That's awesome, man, because you're right. It, it grounds, it, I can see how it grounds you because I mean, I've been there so many times where you're like, you're doing so well and then you take a big win. And then what happens usually is you can end up losing a big loss or, or losing a couple in a row because you're just taking dumb trades. You know, you're getting too confident. Or you yeah. think you have extra money. You know, I have extra money. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I figured pretty much every single big losses come from huge wins. Every single one of them. So uh, I would say as a human, you are emotion. Like, like we're not machines. So we know we're going to get emotional, but we can find a way to counter that emotion. You can manipulate emotions. So by telling yourself that it took a loss, then uh, once you tell yourself so many times, it becomes a fact. Uh, and uh, yeah, you will, cha- you will definitely change your I would say, trading performances. Uh, that's that's yeah. a good tip. And when it comes to trading in just a general term, non-specific pattern or anything, but I want to know like, are you, because you're trading a lot bigger size now, are, is, are you thinking, do you just trade that your setups or are you trading like, here's my setup and then you narrow down and say, okay, the level two is acting right. Or, or, or are you more so just like, here's my setup. It's here's what I expect from that setup. So here's my plan. Let me just execute. Or do you like kind of take into account other factors like level two and tape and all of that? Uh, I don't really take that many factors in. Uh, only thing I would take in will be volume. And uh, is the volume sufficient enough for me to size in this much? And also, uh, another thing will probably be my maximum loss. Now, how much am I willing to lose on this trade? Now, if this trade has about 80% winning percentage, right now, my maximum loss will be 25K mm-hmm. yeah, per pattern. The reward will definitely be one to five, one to four. So either I lose 25 or I make 100. Uh, yeah, so that's two of the biggest thing that I take into a trade. First thing is uh, everything has to come in a surprise. So when you go into a trade, like mentally, it's very important. Like uh, it's more important than pattern because when you are sizing, then you have to think differently. Uh, so let me let's say I'm going to a trade mm-hmm. and I borrow the shares uh, and I'm looking at this trade. Okay, I'm, my maximum loss is 25k now. At that maximum loss is already in my head. That means I already took 25K losses. And uh, when I go in, and especially when I don't look at my uh, unrealized or realized uh, after the end of the day, every, the profit comes in as a surprise. When you are already prepared for that loss mentally, then uh, you will do much better in terms of you know, trading performances. And then I guess that would make you size in appropriately when you're ready to size instead of hesitate. Like, do you, like, maybe you have to size in 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 different portions, right? Because you're you're trading bigger. But would you say for the most part, you would recommend sizing, like when you are ready to enter your stock, 
that you should just enter or you should have multiple entries like everywhere just to get in your like what do you feel about that okay so uh i have different experience about that uh for multiple add-ins i don't really recommend on unless you have a certain trend that does bounces along the way that's where you can average yourself up by risking the 75 percent of that u shape now that's what i used a long time ago uh, then typically with that much size uh, i like to aim at one point everything has to aim at one point so as soon as i take the entry that entry will be my risk uh, so once you practice with your pattern so many times, uh, you will know where, like, where the top is. Like, have an idea where the top is. By using level twos, you can kind of figure it out. Okay, if I take an entry right here, there's this this point is about sixty percent will be my uh, will be the today's top. Once I size it in, soon as I size it in, it stop pulls back. I never size into. Uh, weaknesses so majority of the time that my entry becomes my risk so that's where the perfect trades comes in when your entry become your uh, become your risk uh i don't know i'm i win majority of the time <laughs> so because you could be patient and you i mean it's, it ends up being ultimately a zero that, risk trade like yeah, yeah. It, it's zero risk yeah so either i lose either i don't make either i profit. win or i just walk away <laughs> yeah yeah what what about a couple of things you mentioned, risk reward, one to five, one to four, whatever. I'm curious, are you sizing out or are you looking in, to get out only where either A, something changes in the setup or B, it hits your price target? Where are you at on that? So I've been tracking uh, many statistics. I know where the stock's going to drop to, like in certain range. Once it hit that range, I would definitely, you know, I. If the level two is really weak, I would definitely cover you know, at least half, then see what it's, if it's going to drop harder. But if, it depends on the level two. But majority of the time, I know where it's going to drop. Yeah. And how are you? So you've been trading for how many years now? Ah, uh, I don't know, 19 to 25, almost 26 now. Yeah, so 25. Uh, it's six about six years. years. So yeah. At the beginning, I know you say you, you've been tracking at now because you know like the, your edge in terms of how much profit you should get. But at the yeah. beginning, how did you determine that by tracking? Like, did you just, you know, just look, uh, go back? I don't know. Like, how did you get that edge then compared to now? Or were you trading a little bit different in terms of profit taken then? Uh, in terms of taking profit? Mm -hmm. um, nothing really changed. Uh yeah, nothing really changed in terms of taking profit. By but, so how would you track and then, I mean, but how did you have that much statistics back in your decision back when you started? Because now it um, makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because you've been doing yeah. it for so long. Uh, I will try to, you know, <laughs> try to find any type of similar patterns by tracking the patterns for at least, you know, 100 samples. That's why I tell people that you need at least 100 samples before you size into something that that proves you that has the winning percentage. Um, you have to limit them into certain market cap and flow because they react a little bit uh, much more different. So, and, um, and, and when it comes to, I guess the one thing that you mentioned earlier as well is, is when you size in, you like to size in, you, you prefer to just get in your full size when you, when you feel like that's the right area to get in. Yeah. How, how long did it take you personally or was it a challenge for you at some point to size in on those perks rather than chase a little bit? Uh, I used to chase too. Um, and after that, I never done, because there's some of the tickers that I pretty much, uh, you, uh, I think you experienced this before. When you are sizing into a stock, let's say it's a bad day, you, you, as soon as you short into weaknesses, you bounce back and you cover. As soon as you cover, <laughs> you buy, then it drops. So it does that 10 times in a row. <laughs> You're just like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it happens. So I'd rather just sizing one point and not dealing with that. Um, and uh, when you practice from multiple times, as I said, when you have zero risk, you can bounce however you want. If you break my risk, then I just... You know, lose you know, some of the fees and maybe a thousand bucks by sizing you know 200k positions or 
150k positions. If if you could actually go back in time right now and be like, you know what? Hey, hey, Stephen, 19 years old, do this right now to get to here quicker. What would you do? What would you tell yourself? Uh, oh boy, I took so many losses on first screen day. Yeah. So, uh, there is, so I do get a lot of questions that this is the thing that I used to do multiple times. I was pretty much, uh, I can make one of them every, every week is when I'm seeing something is gapping up and, uh, I don't know if it's going to push or not, but you want to short definitely into a push, right? When you see a stock, as soon as it opens, boom, straight down, dump into it. You want to short it, but you don't have a chance to short it. Right. And you pretty much end up chasing, you know, the little bounces that happened. And all of a sudden you see all those uh, gappers can reverse instantly in five minutes and get halted. And all of a sudden, oh, okay, well, I have to take a loss. And uh, people just don't understand that you don't have to trade that day. Like you either short the bounce or you don't. So you don't have to trade that little bounce because in a long run, that one type of spike can wipe out every single little bounces you shorted <laughs> in one trade. So it's not worth it to deal with that type of headache if you only have like 2% risk of war, two percent risk of war by adding all those losses and gains together. So. That's a good point. And <clears throat> speaking of that, do you, cause you brought up a, like the first green day short. Cause I personally, that's one of my favorite, that's my high odds setup, but I, I have certain criteria, not just first green day, but like, do you trade first green days too? Or do you kind of, avoid uh, them now? uh, I do trade first green day. Yes. Okay. Okay. But it has and, to be very restricted criteria. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and you prefer it on an up, uh, some kind of spike rather than a yeah. drop. Yeah, absolutely. I would never show it into a drop as soon as the market will. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've, I've done it plenty of times and I've lost plenty of those times. <laughs> it, it, it Literally, it's so frustrating because it, it's exactly what you said. It'll drop and then maybe you make money. The risk reward is really not that great because you can't size in. Immediately. Yeah. And then if it does come back and it gets halted and just spikes, it, it's just a frustrating day and it can really ruin your mentality. Yeah. So, you know, before we start to wrap this up, Ducks, I want to ask you two more things. And one of those is, is there, is there anything that you feel like a lot of traders ask you that they feel is, if I know, if Ducks tells me this, I'm going to be on my way. That's really not true. Mm. Okay. So, like the any... Uh, of advice for to give them as a beginner like you know how some beginners will say hey ducks can you tell me how to do xyz because they think if you tell them that that they're going to be profitable forever like, uh, what are the wrong like the questions that you get asked the most that they think is going to make them consistently profitable but it really isn't yeah uh there is stuff that like some of the psychology will never change but there's stuff you have to go in and tune back and forth, especially on in terms of, you know, how much volume is trading, how, like what's the pushing percentage, if it's trading certain volume in the pre-market. Um, but for beginners, I think the most important thing that makes majority of your losses is your emotions. It's not the patterns. When your emotion gets in the way, you will trade whatever tickers is on the top percent beginner, and you will start taking a loss. Uh, and by the end of the day, when you look back at your account statement, you don't even really know what you're doing on that, on that day. Uh, I have done that multiple times. So um, if, I, if, you feel, if you are struggling, uh, especially on trading random stuff, write your stuff down. When you are looking at a ticker, okay, is it you know in this range? Is the volume in this range? Is everything fitting? If it's fitting, okay, check mark, trade it. Uh, so you don't have to go through in your head um, and you have to, I don't know, you have to force yourself to do that. It's, it's a difficult process. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. very hard to do. It's very hard to write down and not execute. Yeah. It's very hard. I think the biggest thing is until they learn that, I mean, you, I mean, if you don't, you're just going to 
kill your account. You're going to kill your account. You're going to kill it's, your account. It's pretty much the same mentality that there's laws that not telling you not to do drugs and people still do it. Once they figured out they went to jail, they won't do it anymore. So like you will have to, <laughs> it's the same, like you know something stupid, but you still wanted to do it once. So, uh, and everybody has that. I would say you're going to go through these type of almost blowing up your account type of experience. Um, I did, I had one, um, but I was lucky. For other people, they're probably not as lucky. I had a 62K account. I was down 59,000, I think, back in the days. Uh, yeah, I was showing something like that's up 800% on that day. And you went to like 8,000%. I don't know, probably oh, wow. 2,000 or 8,000%. I forgot. And uh, you got halted when I was at nine. Since it opened, it opened at three. So I showed it at 2.8. <laughs> As I covered for a for a roller coaster ride but uh you're gonna go through that like i think everybody will have that type of experience the thing is uh you want to make these type of mistakes less frequent as possible uh, to eliminate that you have to keep refining your assistance putting more hours into it and i know saying study but study like a lot of people don't really know what to study uh, one of the most important thing that I've done for my trading performances at the beginning is I will never look at somebody's gains. When I look at traders, everybody posting their gains. No, I don't want to see that. That's why I blinded Twitter a long time ago. I will go into like some of the website like Profity or some people yep. trading penny stocks that I will see their losses. I will only pick out all their big losses and try to figure out, okay, what are they thinking, especially at that specific timing? If I can figure it out, then I'll write all those stuff down. I will memorize them. Then uh, I will not make it. So, and oh. people always tend to like, oh, Ducks made $100,000, $200,000. It's so cool. And uh, I want to learn that. But... I take many. I took losses on the uh, sending people alerts, so they never look at the losses. They only look at gains. That's the problem. You have to go look at some the traders' career and to see how they really changed, how are they modified their strategies. It's always based on their losses, not based on their wins. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a- that's great, man. I like I like as you said that, and you know I'm glad you said that because. I've never thought, just to make sure I understand, you said that you would look at people's losses to see and learn what they were thinking so that way you don't make those same mistakes. Yeah, I want to like rate That's you. Crazy. So you can find like some type, no, I think there's a software that can play back that day with all the On demand on thinkorswim. Computer. Yeah, I will write down the entry of their entry, write down their exit, and I will try to feel that type of feeling. Huh. So, and once you feel it, you will know it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's and awesome once, no, once you know it sucks you already experienced that type of losses but you actually didn't so it didn't physically like impact on your account equities it impact on your you gain experience from that so, so well well ducks look man i appreciate you saying that and we're gonna wrap it up with this thank okay. you so much for no being problem. part of the show if there's anyone who has questions or wants to learn more about you steven what's the best way for them to do that uh our, my website is stevenduxi.com. So that's, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. So there you go, guys. So thanks again, Stephen, for being here, my man. No problem.